Eric McKinney here with former USC defensive end Charlie Weaver, uh, All-American, all All-Conference all defensive end. Uh, Charlie, th thanks so much for, for joining us today. You're welcome. Very thankful that you called. So we'll, we'll just jump in first and 10 uh, with, with Charlie Weaver. Looking back at the recruiting process, when did you know uh, that, that USC was going to be the school for you, that you were going to end up at USC? Well, actually, uh, when I got out of high school, I signed a national letter of initiative. And so uh, they recommend that I go to a junior college first. And there was a junior college within a mile from my home called Country Casa Junior College. And my parents didn't want me to be home. They said I needed to be away. So they did a little research. And the University of Utah recommend a junior college. It was called Arizona Western Junior College in Yuma, Arizona. This junior college was 12 miles out of town in the middle of the desert. <laughs> so that's why I ended up going. So how did you go from, from there to, to USC then? Well, actually what happened, uh, we, uh, we started off the season went losing two games. Uh, one game we lost seven to six. We lost a game three to two. Then we won nine in a row, and we got uh, a position to play in a, a junior college bowl game in Las Vegas. We played against the Henderson Junior College in Las Vegas. Of course, they would pick to beat us, and we beat them. But uh, Phil Kruger, who was my linebacker coach at SC, and also the coordinator, Craig Furtick, was there to recruit a running back named Lindsey Cole to replace O.J. Simpson. And it just so happened that I made, I had 26 tackles that game and they did approach me. And uh, I, got, I got really excited. I told them, yes, I would love to go to SC. They got back to the school. They called me a month later and they told me they couldn't talk to me any longer because I signed a national letter of intent to go to the University of Utah. And it was then afterwards, a couple of months afterwards, I went to visit the University of Utah and I, I hated that visit, I'll be honest with you. I, I did not like it at all. And uh, so I stayed uh, in junior college. They didn't come and get me because, you know, I signed to go there, but they didn't come and get me or send me any kind of information to fly there. So I stayed in junior college for my sophomore year. The city of Yuma bought that bowl game. It was held in Yuma at the end of the season. We played in it again. Uh, and, and we beat the team. And right after that, uh, that game, when I was getting ready to pack my bags and go to Utah, the University of Utah fired the head coach. And once they fired the head coach, that killed my obligation to go there. Uh, and Kruger, Phil Kruger came to let me know that that had happened and what my, uh, uh, I wasn't responsible to go there anymore. So I committed to USC then. Okay, so that's how I got there. When you're at USC, your your favorite game that you played in while you were at USC? Oh, man. <laughs> there was a lot of them. But I think my favorite game personally would have been uh, the last game of the season. Uh, we were playing UCLA. UCLA was undefeated. They were the number one scoring team in the nation. They had a running back that needed 43 yards to become the all-time leading rusher for UCLA. And we as a wild bunch, well, as a, as a, a unit, we were very close as a defensive unit, uh, especially the five down linemen. We lived near each other. We would always get together one day during the week and play cards and, and talk a lot of trash and talk about who was going to have the best game and about our, our assignment. And uh, what was that question again? I got kind of got lost. Your, your favorite game. You're talking about the, the 69 UCLA game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, it was the last game of the season. Like I said, UCLA was undefeated. They had the number one scoring team in the nation. They had a running back that needed 43 yards to become an all-time leading rusher. And we swore that if he got 43 yards that game, we were going to walk off the field and let the second team play. So fortunately, I think in the second quarter, uh, he crawled off the field to a standing ovation. He couldn't play any longer. Uh, we kind of racked him up. And <laughs> and in that game, I had one of the biggest hits in the history of USC. Uh, the quarterback on this one play, he was going back in pass coverage. And, and I was in pass coverage, I mean. And he was going back to pass. And 
he saw an opening and he was started to run. And I saw this opening and I left my man to, I knew he had to run. So I ran toward this opening, you know, and I'm glad he didn't stop to throw the ball. And we met at the same time. And I hit him and knocked him about four or five feet in the air and about three or four yards back. And of course we won that game miraculously. But after the game, they interviewed him and he said he didn't remember anything from the time I hit him until the end of the game. So I, I guess we can call it, I knocked him in a little cuckoo. I'm, I'm glad you gave us distances because I was going to ask you how high and far do you think he bounced <laughs> off when, when you hit him. Okay. Uh, the, the best player you played with during your time at USC, and, and again, I know there were a few of them there. The best player I played with at USC? Uh, well, I would have to say uh, the best player. I would have to say the other four members of the Wild Bunch. Al Collins, Jimmy Gunn, Willis Scott, and Tody Smith. The, the best player that you played against during your time at USC? The best player we played against during my time at USC had to be Jim Plunkett. Okay. Jim Plunkett, he was a quarterback at Stanford. Uh, they had an undefeated team, of course. We played them a little earlier in the season. And uh, we beat them with the last second field goal. There was a, I remember this one play. We were down by one or two points. And it was less than a minute to go. 50, I think it was 59 seconds to go. And, or a minute and 59, one of the two. And Jimmy Jones, our offense, the cardiac kids, you know, for one reason, they didn't score a lot of points. But whenever needed, seven times, they came back in the fourth quarter and scored the winning either touchdown or field goal. But he maneuvered all the way down the field, and we kicked a game-winning field goal to beat them. I don't know if that answered the question, though. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's any story like that is, is good with us. Um, get, can you give us a, maybe a, a behind-the-scenes story, something that, that didn't get a lot of, I, I guess, media attention or, or fan attention during your time at, at USC? Well, uh, one story is the fact that a lot of, you know, people think, of what do players do, you know, moments before the game. Uh, we had uh, a really tight bond, the five of us. Of course, the whole defense was tight, but we lived near each other. And during the week, we would all get together at uh, Tody and Bubba's, and I mean, yeah, Tody Smith and Willis Scott's uh, apartment. And we would just get there uh, one day and we would play cards, we would tell jokes, we would talk about the game, but finally at the end of uh, that day, before we uh, went our separate ways, we would talk about what we we're going to do during the game and what we we're going to be playing the next day. Whether if they had a good quarterback, a good uh, lineman, a good running back, we were trying to figure out a way that we were going to neutralize that person. Uh, we would watch a lot of film together, and we. we even though we had a, a game plan, <laughs> game plan, we we swore to ourselves that you know we would not let anyone show out in front of the crowd. To be honest with you, we were going to annihilate anyone we played against, and they were definitely not going to have a good day. Sure. Uh, your favorite, um, you know, road or, or neutral site game, play, playing away from, uh, from, from the Coliseum, what, what was your favorite uh, experience there? Uh, my favorite have to be, I think, Notre Dame. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, went and played Notre Dame. Uh, it was a away game. Uh, I did not like that atmosphere at all, to be honest with you. Oh, man, I remember on the field, man. It was, it, it was loud. They were calling us all kind of names. Uh, they called two of Clarence Davis touchdowns back, and we ended up uh, tying them. I think it was either 10 to 10 or, or 14 to 14. But uh, it was, a, it, it was a, a moment in which, I'll have to be honest, man, they have some tremendous fans there, just like we have at USC. You know, very committed, and they – they uh, did everything to try to draw our attention away from that game. 
and and some of what they were kind of successful. I'm, I was surprised that the referee let them get away with some of the things that they did. They were throwing things at us. And unfortunately, like I said, they called two of Clarence Davis touchdowns back, but uh, we ended up tying that game. Um, I think it was 10 to, I think 10 to 10. Uh, looking back at, at USC's history, I mean, tons of players. Is, is there a guy that you didn't play with that you wish maybe you, you could have played with uh, on the same team? Let me see, a guy from SC, uh, probably Marv Goo. Marv Goo was our, our coach. Uh, I think he played uh, early in, I think, 1962 or something like that. He was the defensive lineman coach. And, man, he, he, was, he was rough, rough, tough. You know, I, I used to watch him uh, being the coach of the defensive lineman. And... The way he coached, I, I always say, I'm glad he's not my coach. <laughs> we probably would have gotten into it <laughs> very often. But uh, I, I really admired and respected him. And, 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 and although he coached the way he did, he brought out the best in those defensive linemen. What's your, and this can be on the field or off the field, your favorite memory uh, of your time at USC? Oh man, my favorite memory memory at USC uh, was definitely the day before the game. After practice, we'd always go down in the locker room. At that time, the locker room was kind of small and we were kind of jam packed in there. And Coach McKay would get in the middle of us and Marv Goo would get in the middle of us and we would have our own rally and, and, and I, I, I'll be honest with you, if we would have played anyone after that game, <laughs> we would have annihilated everyone. It's a good thing that we didn't play football until the next day. But that, those were my uh, favorite memories down in the locker room, how those coaches lifted us to the max, make, make us ready to play the next game. We were just totally ready to play after that rally. And then after USC, a, a double-digit career in the NFL, drafted by the Lions. What, what did you do, either personally or, or professionally, after football uh, ended for you? Uh, when it, football ended for me, uh, I think I, I took a year off. You know, uh, it was heck of a transition, but I took a year off, and I, I ended up. Uh, uh, I got a job with, uh, let me see, I ended up going with, uh, uh, who did I, let me see here, uh, work with a glass company, Safe Flight Auto Glass. I became a, a sales rep for them. Uh, it, it was kind of good because I, I was a sales rep in the area where I grew up, you know, the Bay Area, San Francisco, Oakland, Vallejo, all those places. So uh, our company, uh, was kind of low on sales when I did get that position. And uh, I know the truck drivers that made deliveries had just bobtails. And, you know, it was a success story because once I uh, was accepted for that job, uh, I did a lot of sales calls, and brought a lot of business to, uh, to our company where we had to get big rigs. So I really appreciate the support that I got from all the businesses in the Bay Area. And it was a lot of fun, to be honest with you. And then the, the tenth one here, what piece of advice would you give to, to current or future uh, USC student athletes? Uh, man, just build a bond. Uh, you know, you, you're coming from a heck of a tradition, one of the greatest of all time, the USC Trojans. Uh, just remain dedicated and have a purpose and, and uh, you know, before you play that next day, imagine and have it on your mind all the good things that you're going to do for the team to be, to help them to win. And, and then I, wanna, I wanted to get in obviously to, to Wild Bunch, but I'm going to put that aside for a second. You, you got to take me through that Utah visit. What, what was it about going out to Utah? And then can you, can you compare it, I guess? Did, did you go to USC? Did you see USC before you ultimately you know, committed there and, and started your career there? Uh, I remember taking the flight, landing in Utah, uh, 
going to the hotel. Uh, it, it was kind of strange. Uh, you know, I was just being at USC. You know, uh, people see you, they speak, they talk to you. Uh, I didn't feel that at Utah. Uh, once I got uh, on campus, it was um, and, and you know, met the coaches and everybody. It was I didn't really feel warm, to be honest with you. And and then I kind of got a little background about the University of Utah. Uh, they didn't really have a lot of black people kind of raise you uh, when you were in Mississippi. So. Uh, you know, they, it was a little racism going on. Um, and so I, I felt very uncomfortable. You know, I called my parents and, and, and let them know that I had made that visit, but uh, I gave them what the atmosphere was like. And, and uh, but I was still obligated to go there, even though when I left there and went back to the junior college, I called my parents and said, I didn't want to go. And they told me, you know, that I had signed a letter and that we would pray. Uh, my mother said, we'll pray about it, son, but, you know, you're obligated. So they didn't come and get me after my sophomore year, I mean, freshman year. So my sophomore year, like I said, after the game, uh, the last game of the season, the bowl game, they fired the head coach there. And that gave me the opportunity to uh, go to the University of Southern California. To, we got to talk about the Wild Bunch. How, how did that come together? When did you kind of start to realize you guys really had something there on, on that defensive line? <laughs> oh man, that what a George's moment. Uh I remember meeting those guys in practice and they were just so warm. Jimmy Gunn was the other linebacker. I had heard about him. Uh man, what a great linebacker he was at USC, even before I got there. You know, I heard some stories about, you know, he uh got got hurt against UCLA. It was the last game of the season. Uh, they were playing for the Rose Bowl and all of that, and he got hurt. Uh, he wouldn't let them take him out of the game, uh, even though he had a uh, you know half a leg. Uh, he had a tremendous game, and he stopped a lot of drives. And I, I was just very impressed when I when I met him and heard that, that story. But say the question again. Uh, I'm just curious how you guys came together, how, how that relationship formed. And oh, then when, okay. did, when did it really so, click for you? You know, what, what happened, it, it, it clicked for me. Uh, we, we started getting together after practice and during the week. We, we would get together, just the five of us. Uh, of course, we were, you know, of course, at, you know, the facility there. But we live close to each other, and, and, and we would visit one another. Actually, Toady and Willard had an apartment where we would all go. Al would be there, myself and Jimmy Gunn. And we would just go there, and we would talk about practice. We would talk about the coaches. We would talk about, about the atmosphere and, you know, wh you know why we were there, uh, what uh, we wanted to accomplish, and our commitment to uh, – we wanted to be one of the best defensive linemen uh, in the country. And, and we talked about that. You know, we want to be intimidating. You know, if they run against us, the, if the running back carried about 20 times, he's not going to com stay, complete the whole game. I'm just being honest with you. We will go like a reckless abandon. We're going to hit everyone as hard as we can. And no one's going to like playing against us. That's what one thing we talked about. And uh, once we got on the field, it was serious. There was no joking, no playing. But fortunately, we're, we're kind of, I'm kind of glad that we had people like Al Collins, the senior, and Jimmy Gunn, because there was times when, you know, they'll just kind of loosen us up because we, we really took it serious. The, uh, you know, uh, I know Tony was a junior and I was a junior, but those guys that had been there for, you know, three years already, uh, there were moments when they, you know, got real serious and they wanted us that way too, and we followed the lead. The, the talk about kind of being the best defensive line year, was, was there a point, you know, during camp or, or leading up to the season where you realized that you could do that, that, that you guys really had the, the talent to be what you became? There was a point. Uh, the point was in practice. In practice, John McKay, <laughs> he knew that when we got together in practice, <laughs> we were going to, you know, try to knock somebody's head off. So what? would do at the end of practice 
the only contact we would have, he would give us a play. He said, okay, we get the offense line there, and it would be the offensive line, the quarterback, and the running back, or two running backs, and just the defensive line. And he'd tell us that uh, one of them was going to get the ball, and he wanted to see what our reaction was going to be, right? And they would always run a misdirection play or, or uh, uh, a reverse of something that we had in practice. And what McKay was doing was he knew that if, if we just had the normal practice, that the five of us would probably hurt one of the offensive players. So he would always run a trick play on us, and he would only do it once. And it would tee us off. So by the time game time come, man, we were ready to kill someone. <laughs> so that's how he, Coach McKay, got us ready. He would run plays on us, just one play. And it would be successful, and and the five of us would get stopped. But he would stop it, and you know, at the same time that week, the next day. Going forward from the the sixty nine season into the seventy season, that that game against Alabama, traveling down there, what what did that mean to you? What what was that like? Um, it, you know, experiencing that playing playing in that game. Okay, Alabama. It, I remember when they came down and told us about that game. So there was a lot of details about, you know, uh, some of the things that was going on in Mississippi. Well, you would know it was really a racist place at, at one time. Uh, but I moved away from there when I was actually three years old. But to, to go back there, I, I'll never forget. Uh, Tody was from the South. Uh, the other players were from the South. Um, so we got together and as a team, and, and we talked about it, but we knew that, um, that uh, you know, we had to go down there and play football. i never forget that experience. Uh, I, I remember uh, the flight. I remember when we got to Alabama, we got off the plane, and there were thousands of people out there. And I, I remember getting off the plane as we was getting off the plane to go on the bus. Uh, uh, some of the players on our team had made kind of a line, you know, because we were a very united team, black and white. We were, uh, we loved playing with one another. We communicated and socialized with one another. We were very together. And I know, I remember before we left, I think some of the white guys had mentioned, some of the guys on the team had mentioned that we should room black and white in every room. And you know, we got together as a, as a group, black group, and we decided that we would keep it like it was. You know, we had black white in some rooms and, and so forth. So we just decided to keep it like it was. But I noticed that when we got there as a team, I noticed that uh, some of the players on our team, uh, the white players, they were very protective. You know, they were always, uh, I remember getting off the bus, they would make a double line, you know, so we could walk through when we got to hotels. You know, they hung with us. Uh, that was a, a heck of an ex experience, to be honest with you. Like I said, I was born in Mississippi. But, uh, you know, we finally got together at the hotel and, and decided that, you know, we we're going to focus more on football than to, you know, focus on the race that was going on during that time. Dur during the 1970 season, at, at the end of it, you're named the, the most inspirational player for, for USC. Was that your, your personality? How, how did that kind of come together? And, and what kind of, you know, teammate, what kind of player were you at, at USC? Well, you know, uh, I love the game of football. Uh, I'm looking at an article right now on my wall. Uh, Coach McKay at one time says, He's never coached a player that loves the game and loves the hit more than Charlie Weaver. Uh, so, you know, I, I love the game of football, you know, and, and I mean, you know, I was, you know, throughout my career uh, in high school, I was always the most inspirational player in junior college. And, and of course, getting that award at USC was uh, uh, very rewarding for me my family and my friends. Uh, you know, I just love to play the game. And, you know, I, I love to motivate, so I'm very thankful for that. You were inducted into the USC Athletic Hall of Fame in, in 2018. Uh, again, same, similar kind of question. What, what was that process like? How, how did, how, what was the feeling behind that? Oh, man. 
one of the most joyous moments of my life. Uh, I, I never forget getting a phone call. As a matter of fact, one of my teammates called me, Al Collins, uh, one of the Wild Bunch members. He, he had called me and told me way ahead of time that I had made it. And so that was, that was just uh, a great experience for me, to be honest with you, uh, especially with Al calling me and telling me that because he's been there and Jimmy Gunn had, you know, has been there. And so when he, he called me, man, I'll tell you, it, it, I had that feeling. I went back. And talk about uh, myself, Tony, and Willard, and and uh, those guys. Uh, so it was a very emotional moment. Uh, not only on the football field, but in real life, we we even talk to each other uh, uh, very regularly. Uh, when we were playing pro ball, after we retired, we maintained that relationship. So uh, right now, that's a sad moment for me. <laughs> Sorry. That's, no, un understandable. How, how much did you, uh, that relationship between you and, and USC football continue through the years? Was that something where you, you know, watched games or, or attended games or, or kind of stuck around with, with the program uh, at, at any point? Oh, yeah. I, I watched games. I still went to games. I, I still had a relationship uh, with a couple of coaches uh, that I would talk to. Uh, I still talk to John McKay uh, on a regular basis. Uh, he would always, you know, there was a lot of times he told me he was, he wish I was there to, to give a little extra motivation. <laughs> but they didn't need it. You know, they went on to be very successful. But uh, yeah, I, I love that relationship I had with those coaches that were uh, live then. And right now, I think they're all gone, uh, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're all up there. La last couple things here. I, I wanted to get your take. The Wild Bunch 2, that, you know, early 2000s, you got uh, Ed Orgeron on the defensive line and, and some more guy, you know, Sean Cody and Omar Nazel and Mike Patterson. Was that so, did did they live up to what you guys kind of said? What what was your take on kind of that push for for a wild bunch two there at USC? Well, personally, uh, I was wishing they would be successful. They were. They they did play good. You, you know, compared to two, uh, you know, they played at you know the different times than we did. Uh, uh, for, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, they they had an offense. Probably they had offenses that were probably some of the best offenses uh, that that USC had as far as scoring wise. Uh, we played on a team where even though we went undefeated, and I I would still say even though we didn't score a lot of points, we had a great offense because seven times in the fourth quarter uh, we were down and our offense had the ball, but the last couple of minutes to go they always drove the ball downfield and scored. Whereas on the team that that wild bunch, the other wild bunch played on, they played on one one of the best offenses that were ever at USC. You know, offenses that scored 20, 30 points a game. So not down playing their or anything, but I think we were on the field a lot longer than they were. So last thing, you you accomplished so much at USC. You you personally, your teams. What are you, when you look back, what are you most proud of? What, what sticks with you kind of the, the most about your couple of years there at, at USC? I think the Trojan uh, game day. <laughs> game day, uh, the day before the game, especially when we were away, uh, Marv Gould would run the defense. Uh, it could have been the whole team, but I think just the defense. Yeah, just the defense. He would round us up, and we would walk for blocks through town. Our group would lead us, and, you know, we would sing fight songs. And, and, uh, and but we would just march through town. We would walk maybe a, 
a mile and back uh, just for exercise. Uh, but he would lead us. And you know, we would sing some fight songs. Uh, of course, uh, the guy you were standing next to, you would probably talk about how you were going to do the day. But it was a very motivating experience. And I, I'll never forget during his time at USC, especially the day before the game. All right, Charlie Weaver, USC Athletic Hall of Famer, thank you so much for, for your time. That was a, uh, a, a really fascinating look back at, at those couple years in USC history. And of course, uh, a member of the absolutely legendary Wild Bunch defensive line. Th thanks again, Charlie. Well, I appreciate the call. Fight on. Love you, brother. Thank you. Bye-bye.